Okay, this is a third in our series of, of circular references on PSRAs. This time, let's put a target uh, debt to, to, to capital. And let's say, that's a percent, let's say that's 80%, okay? Shift control C to get it to the, oh God, come on, hurry up, this is, uh, uh, okay. Now, what we want to do is not, now the debt amount, we want to set this, the, the, uh, I, I suppose we can go down here if, you know, excuse me, let's put computed debt to cap. And that's going to be uh, the, the uh, total. Oh, shoot. Oh, we, look at that. There was some difference that was left over. <laughs> okay. I should, I'd have to double check our other macro. Oh, I know what we didn't do in our macro. Let's just change the macro from the last time. So, <sighs> that's our computed debt to. <laughs> okay, debt divided by the uh, cost. Why that took me so long? Shift Control P. Target debt to cap. And that's going to be just our 80%. And then we run the difference. And we want to make that difference equal to zero by changing uh, the debt. Okay, so this debt we want now to come from our our target debt to capital ratio. Now, we, before we do this, can we just fix the last thing I did? Just to review where we left off. We put a data table in, edit, and I had forgotten. After I do this, we have to run the circ again. That's this, because I'm like, I hate this so much. Okay, so then now we're running all the data table. Oh, no, no, we're just running this one. Now when we run the data table, remember it does it one by one. And uh, after it does it one by one, now at the very end, at least, it'll put it back to... to uh, to where we started, okay? Um, okay, we almost should uh, make it. Can, can I do something? Yeah, this will be pretty cool. Let's let's make this uh, this 11.09 is this. Why don't we make a? Uh, just, I've never tried this. It, I just got this idea. Let's just make a conditional format and go to a new rule. And use a format and say, well, let's take this one and make it equal to whatever is in uh, this column. But let's press that one with the F4 like this and then format it as a some really cool kind of thing. Okay. <sighs> Font. Okay. So we press OK, and that's it starts. And now if we run the data table, it's going to show you which one is <laughs> computing. I've never done that before, obviously. <laughs> OK. And then hopefully, oops, it's having a problem with that one, and then going back to the beginning. OK. Then uh, now, so we have a difference. Now the problem, if we did the regular goal seek, of course, is that when if we go to data, what if analysis and goal seek, and if we set this difference to uh, zero by changing the, we have to find the blue debt to debt uh, input up here, we'll get stuck. Well, we won't get stuck. It computed something, but when it computed it, the stupid little Excel didn't know that we have a difference here. So the goal seek doesn't work. Okay, so what we have to do is essentially compute this difference and this difference together. We have to have a combined difference. 
and and uh, I'm gonna have to take a, a minute to do this. Okay, so what we can do is what I did here is I put a fixed debt amount. I just said let's start with one seven oh oh, and the computed debt is the target debt to capital times the total cost. And the difference is the fixed minus the computed again. Now you select the area and press shift control F3, top row. Okay, so we have to convert the goal seek into kind of a uh, 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 circular thingamajig, you know, which is a pain. Okay, if you use the function method, you'd never have to do that. Now, what I did here is I just put it the same thing. While the difference in debt here is not equal to zero, then set the fixed equal to the computed debt. And the only other thing I have to do is go up to the this debt here, which we defined as a range name now, and we can do it. So we can put... Uh, okay, Let, let's run the debt uh, goal seek. Okay. Ah, come on. Okay, I can't. Oh, fuck. Well, if that was it. Okay, so that's. This is. Uh, we'll assign the macro and run it to the find debt one, and then we just run this. Now that good, it found it, of course, but this was different. So we'd have to run this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And I'm, this is what I see in these horrible copy and paste models. Another reason not to do them is that then you'd have, now it's starting to get not so easy because now we, we have to uh, uh, run them both at the same time. So we can put sub, let's, do all or something I don't know what you want to call it and then we'd run the circular and we'd run the find debt and we could do um, while range uh, difference and you could even put an absolute value if you're really unable uh, plus range uh, difference uh, debt. Okay, and maybe we should do it all in the same thing. I think that's that would be a little bit better. Uh, let's see how this works, and then we we put uh, W and D. Okay, so we just put them both together, run them both together, and. Uh, and ah, we do get something to work. Okay, so now once you've done this, then you could go to make another data table. Okay, and on the another data table, then you could put let's put uh, sixty-five percent debt, seventy. Uh, how about we'll just add one percent to the debt, and then. Uh, Ah, shift control P and then this time we can put row begin we could you could even make a little thing with an index function and and change this data table but I'm gonna put uh, how about begin row end row and um, uh, how about call base call out one call out two so this time we're gonna and so this time let's put the equity IRR and let's put the debt here so we've got just a one-way data table with two different outputs and we put the row here and then the row of the end down here the base column is the column 
for this one. The uh, column output is column of this one. And then this is the column of this one. So let's select this uh, area. Shift control three. You know, you, you might. Oh. Did we have end row up here? Begin row. Finish row. Okay, that's kind of bad that we have to make it a different thing, but yeah, I can look at another one of my uh, uh, videos and you see that you could just do it all in one go. Why don't we press F3, press paste the list, uh, copy this. Let's uh, make that. Let's go to our macros, and we'll actually we can. It, it's actually going to be so similar to this one. We'll put sub data table one. Okay, and so we we can do the same thing. Perhaps we should set the starting points. Begin uh, debt equal debt equal range uh, debt and we can put four row equal range and then I don't know if we can do this let's I'm trying something I have done before Target range, and we we better put in the data the range name. You could, uh, how about target ratio? I'm gonna name that one equal cells, and we put row, and then we put range and. We have to remember what we call that. Yes. Oh, we okay. I uh, know I forgot that. Okay. Whoops. Cells, row, range. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, that's what we forgot. And then we put uh, cells. And you put row and range, and this is going to be our, our kind of uh, first one. Uh, equals a range uh, equity IRR and so. For that, we have to run this famous one we just did, which was do all. So before we press this one, we have to do do all. And then if we want to uh, next row, did I already have the next row? I already had that, but uh, okay. And finally, we can then put uh, range. Uh, uh, yes, range debt equal begin debt, and we can run the circular again. Okay, and now we just have to remember what all this crap was. And how about if we copy it here? I don't know how to. Uh, wonder if there's a this is all our range names. I don't know. We don't really need all that stuff, do we? So we the we put this row is uh, begin row, I think, right up here. Begin row and uh, that didn't really help. 
help us much. And then we have uh, a row finish or something. Where, where, where was that? Uh, and row, finish row. Okay, and then we put in our uh, column. <sighs> Column out one. No, this this is a, a column base. <laughs> okay, that didn't work at all. The column base. Oh no, but that the other one we called a base column. Okay, fine. Maybe it was best just to leave it in this, and then we put the range. And then this is column output uh, one and column output two, which of course I can't even find anymore. Column out underscore one and column out underscore two. Okay, and the only other thing we have left to do, well, let's of course delete all this junk. That was not a great idea. But tried it, okay. And uh, we need to name the target ratio in our in our model, okay. Where is this target? Okay. And then what we do is we uh, let's try this, okay. Whoops, why did that happen? Oh, no, I can't. I'm not good at using the mouse. I should be better at using the mouse. Okay, and uh, this is the t table one. And why don't we maybe put it over here? We can. Uh, Assign the macro to this data table one and just run it. Okay, and if it doesn't, I'm saving it. That's the really important thing. We don't need this, do we? Because uh, we kind of did the goal to seek ourselves. And did I? So I assigned it to uh, data table one. I'm afraid to run it, obviously. And then I'm just going to run it. And it hasn't blown up yet, but it hasn't showed me anything. Uh, it's taking, is it taking too long? Ah, there we go. Okay, so we can put the equity IRR and the debt IRR with different uh, debt leverage percents. Okay, and I don't have to have you watch all of this, and I'm, I'm going to finish with this uh, video.